Hello, this is Enterprise News Headlines. I am Angela Akma. The Central Bank of Nigeria on Tuesday said it injected the sum of $210 million into the interbank foreign exchange market to boost liquidity in the system. The bank said it allocated the sum of $100 million to dealers in the wholesale sector, while the small and medium enterprises segments and invisible received the sum of $55 million each. The acting director of Corporate Communications Department at the bank, Isaac Okarafo, said the continued intervention in the interbank forest market was mainly to ensure sustained liquidity and stability in the market. According to him, the intervention by the CBN had impacted the market positively and guaranteed a stable exchange rate for the Naira. The Minister of Finance, Mrs. Kemi Adeoshin, on Tuesday said the federal government would settle the inherited debt and contractual obligations to local contractors between 2016 and 2015. Adeoshin revealed this while appearing before the Administration SOC Committee of the Senate on Promissory Note Program and Bond Issuance. According to a statement issued by the Minister's media advisor, Aluyinka Akintunde, the debt owed to various classes of contractors, including the terminal benefits of ex-workers of the Nigerian Airways, would be paid through promissory note and bonds issuance. She said the unpaid federal government obligations constituted to drag on economic activities across many sectors, adding that the present administration was determined to address the problem. Adersham said the federal government is working towards settling this inherited debt. Telecoms and Uganda Communications Commissions are in discussion to decide the threat of ATEM's crash cards ahead of the UCC June 30th deadline. The MTN Chief Marketing Officer, Mr. Olivier, said MTN will be facing out ATEM's crash cards after June 30th. According to him, MTN will instead resort to selling ATEM through electronic means such as mobile money and online dealers. The MTN Sales and Distribution General Manager, Ms. Annie Tabura, said the electronic ATEM will give agents an opportunity to expand their commission income, which unlike Scratch Card is much higher. Treasury Cabinet Secretary Henry Rotish has hit Kenya's big hangers with a 35% top tax rate, hoping to increase income tax revenue by 68 billion shillings. According to Mr. Rotish, the top tax rate is for those earning more than 9 million shillings a year, effectively targeting those with a monthly income of 750,000 shillings and above. Report reveals the number of Kenyans earning more than 750,000 shillings a month, however, remains small as government employees, who form the bulk of the people in formal employment, earn an average of 57,915 shillings per month. The average private sector's employee wage stands at 56,724 shillings, according to this year's economic survey. The bill, which promises a significant overhaul of the Income Tax Act, also targets large corporations, which will pay the top tax rate for taxable income for more than 500,000 million shillings. And on the foreign scene, U.S. best cereal maker Gilok says it is pushing out of Venezuela because of the economic deterioration in the country. According to the workers, they were being prevented from entering the plant into the central city of Marrakech on Tuesday. President Nicolas Maduro, who is standing for re-election, told the rally that he would hand control of the factory over to the workers. The president, who has been in office since 2013, blamed Venezuela's problem on an economic war being waged by foreign governments and businesses. However, Gilok is the largest multinational to close the scale-back operations in Venezuela citing strict currency control, a lack of raw materials and soaring inflation. Moving down to sports, gambling firm Paddy Parabet Frey said it is in talks over a merger in the US with fantasy sports side fan Dwell. Enterprise Television learned that the talk centers around combining its US operation with fan Dwell to create a business to target the prospective U.S. sports betting market. This comes as the American Supreme Court overturned 1992 legislation that banned sports betting in the most U.S. states. However, it offers fantasy sports gaming around the NFL American football, MLB baseball, NBA basketball, and the NHL ice hockey. And that's it on Enterprise News Headlines for today. For more news, updates, special reports, and shows, visit our website www.enterprisetv.tv. Our social media platform are always there for your all-round information in the world of business. I am Angela Akman. Many thanks for watching.